Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Rob Lee. We're here in sunny South Florida in the middle of Wynwood, the art district of Miami. And we're sitting here with my spies, MC Extraordinaire, one of the best and hottest MCs in Miami right now. And we want to get to know you a little bit better, man. So say what's up to the people first. What's going on, man? How y'all doing? I go by the name of Spaz, SPAZ305 on Instagram. The MC out of Hialeah. Just out here doing what I do. Spaz, thanks for taking the time, man. So thank you. You just said from Hialeah. So yeah. tell us a little bit about what Hialeah is and for people who don't know. Um, Hialeah is a city, um, you know, little city in Miami. Um, Basically, it's where I, I, I came out here in 1990. I was originally born in Chicago, Indiana. Um, Hialeah is home. Hialeah is the spot where I learned a lot of stuff. Like, I lived all those, you know, those those years of like, yeah, I'm learning this shit, whether it's heartbreak or elation or whatever, it was all in Hialeah. Hialeah is like real, man. It's like predominantly Hispanic. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, like, it's, it's, it's real. It gets yeah. real fast in yeah, Hialeah. Yeah. Like, you grow up quick. Mm -hmm. So and how does it compare to like uh, Indiana? Where you really Indiana, grew? really, I don't have. I, I have certain um, memories out there, but really, it was you know I was a kid. I really the stuff that I remember, I remember, but it was for opposite for different reasons. Um, Miami is just what I do remember. Just Miami, just being like you said, predominantly Hispanic. Out in Indiana, it's Midwest. So, yeah. but where I was from, it was a lot of Mexicans. A lot okay. of Mexicans. Um, but yeah, out here it's just more, I would say, of a melting pot of cultures. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Especially in Hialeah, it's mostly, you know, like I grew up around a lot of uh, Cubans. I'm Puerto Rican, Colombian, but there's a lot of Cubans, a lot of Nicaraguans. Um, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of different, uh, you know, different tribes, different I would say. Yeah, different cultures, hell yeah. And um, Hialeah, it's just pro it's progressed uh, such a long way from when I first came out here. Yeah, it's totally different. It's constantly changing. It's constantly construction going on. It's, it's annoying as hell to all of us. That's Miami in general. But, yeah, right? but you know, in the end, it's, it's it looks great. And it's, you know what I'm saying? It's progress. That's why they call it the city of progress. That's what's up. So let me ask you about the music because, like I said earlier, man, you're like one of my favorite MCs down here for sure. And I mean, you kick conscious stuff. You kick, you know, party stuff. Mm. I mean, describe your music to people. Hip hop is the way that I like to describe it. That's just you know, that's what I was raised on. That's what I grew up loving, and that's what I do in every sense of the word. Like, no matter what kind of beat I'm on, I'm it's hip hop. If I'm doing spoken word or some poetry shit, that's hip hop that I'm kicking. You know what I mean? Um, my stuff is basically it's my experiences. Um, I kick my like you said, I do my party stuff. I do my more conscious stuff. I do a lot of personal stuff. Um, at the end of the day. I, I stress lyrics, you know what I'm saying? So I guess you would say lyrical. I'm not, I don't like to be put in that whole, that box of the lyrical miracle rapper, you know what I'm saying? Because that's very one dimensional, in my opinion. I like to do a whole lot. I, I do freestyle a lot. I love to rock with bands. Um, I love to just, um, I love to do what, what drives me, whether it be a fast beat, a slow beat, a conscious beat, a wild out beat. It's just what drives me, and that's basically what I do. I do lyrical hip hop that drives me. That's interesting, man, because right now it seems like a lot of the lyricism in hip hop, because hip hop's like all these different subcategories mm -hmm. now. So, and I'm hearing a lot of like mumble stuff, I'm hearing a lot of stuff that I don't particularly understand or even vibe with, but people fuck with it, and it's evolution, right? right. It's just, it's a part of the. the, the part of progress and you right. keep your part of progress. But what I like about your stuff is just that, the lyrics. You have some lyrics that make sense and I can listen to and start provoking and, you know, so what, what inspires that? Um, like I said, I grew up listening to these MCs that, that's how I look at it. Yo, I could, I could understand you, like you speak to me. Um, I'm learning something, you know what I mean? Like, especially as a kid, the MCs that I listen to, they, they made me want to learn what certain words were. So I, who were like some of your favorite MCs growing up? Growing up, um, you know, Tang was like my favorite group. Uh, Big L, Big Pun. Um, that's because Black Big, Thought. That's busy. It's Puerto not because no, it's <laughs> not because I'm Puerto Rican. It's because he is a the, one of the greatest lyricists, <laughs> Black, White, Puerto Rican, or whatever. He's just he's that one. Like he made me really like when he came in. What he did was, he did lyrical, 
like lyrical, real hardcore shit. But then he, what broke him out was still not a player, which yeah. was on some party smooth for a fat dude that's like him. But he he did it, yeah. and he showed me because that was at a time where you could either be you're underground to the core, that's what you are, or you're mainstream and you're a fucking sellout. That was how that was how we grew up, right? And listen, as listening to hip hop. And he showed me there's a middle ground. Cause even there was a part in his track, he was like, what you want? You know what you want to do dance, you wanna get hardcore, I got some for all that shit. And I was like, yo, that's dope. And then I heard him in an interview say, like, I could be in the mainstream, but I don't need to be of the mainstream. And right then and there was like, yeah. He personified it for me in a way that like good because I didn't know how to express that to my hardcore people who like I was like, oh I do like this cool shit, this fly shit, but I like the hard shit. And Hun did that. You that's know a great that's a great point. And a great lesson too to a lot of like the younger folks that are coming up now that feel like they have to be classified as one thing or another thing. Uh -huh. Really it's about being true to who you are. Mm -hmm. And you had, you know, guys that showed you the way that, yo, it's, I'm about whatever I'm about. Yeah, exactly. And you like it or you don't like it, exactly. you know, this is gonna be me, it's gonna be real. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of cats now could benefit from that lesson. Because, you know, it's either like, okay, you trying to sound like, yeah, and that's the, where the, we're the at. prevailing artists mm -hmm. right now, yeah. whether it's the mumble stuff or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Everybody's trying to sound the same. Right. And Snoop is, you know, uh, all about that, like talking about that stuff, mm -hmm. and this and that stuff, and putting it down, which I don't, I'm not for it. Yeah, you know, Do I'm for I'm being yourself, being true, and that's that's what I see with you, man. Yeah, so, appreciate that. Yeah. And that's what I, that's, I'm glad that, you know, I, I hope that comes across because that's, basically what, what it is. Like I come from that. And to pay homage to that and show respect to that, I feel it's only right that I that I do that because that's what it comes from. Like a lot of times I get off stage and I see a lot of artists too. Um you know what I'm saying they come to me like yo that shit was dope. That's my shit. That these are that's my shit. I love that lyrical shit. That's my shit. And I'm like yo I appreciate that. And then I see them go on stage and then and shit. it's just like, yeah. If if you if that's your shit, why are you afraid of expressing, expressing your shit? Right. Because a lot of people are scared that's just not selling or whatever. But what I love about hip hop and its in its current state is radio is one facet. It's not everything. Radio may be that, but yo, there's so many lanes and so many ways of, of putting your stuff out there. Yes. And that's what. Cause at a time I was jaded with that too. Like ain't nobody trying to hear lyrics. The fuck am I writing for? Nobody right. wants to hear this shit. Right. But it's like you know what? This is what I do. This is what drives me. And in turn, I've seen it drive other people. So it's like, all right, this is not for not. It's not for. It's not without a reason. You're doing this for a reason. There's a way of doing it. There's lanes for everybody. We could all get this. Just trust the process. I love that. Trust the process. That's where I'm at. Um, so so let me ask you another question, man. So. If you could attend a concert of anyone, living or past, who would that be? Michael Jackson. And why? Because Michael Jackson, before all this rap shit, before Michael Jackson was like my first vinyl I ever owned as a kid, Indiana was the bad album. You know what I'm saying? Because I hounded my father, I wanted that album. It was my, that was my vinyl, it was my shit. Um, I grew up watching Moonwalker and fuck it and all his like a tour in Japan and all this extra shit and I never ever once was like never got to see it. Even when I remember when he was doing the This Is It tour, I was like, yo, I know it's just gonna be mad expensive, but I wish I could go, but I know I can't. And it never happened, but up to that point, even as an adult, like yo, I wanna do that. Yo, everybody has to be a Michael Jackson fan. Right? You have to. Even if you don't agree with certain shit, if you have your bullshit ass, you still have fucking, don't tell me you don't jam Thriller every fucking Halloween. Kiss that. my ass. Yeah, you got you right jam that. these songs, you and, know what I'm saying? And Mike, Mike, just like what you talked about with Pun, Mike was like groundbreaking. Yeah, Mike, everybody he, now is still copying still, that. Still, still trying, I hear it. It's right? like, you can, there's not gonna be another Mike, but still to this day, so Even that's why dances, everything. everything, every fucking thing, the showmanship, just everything, the message, all that. That's why, like, it's no question what the one person that or alive would be Michael Jackson. I have a lot of people who are alive that I still would love to see Billy Joel perform. Every time he comes here every year, he goes to Hard Rock, I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna do that one day. I am, because I love Billy Joel, I love all that shit. Showing so, uh, so that diversity. Yeah, like, really, 
something that I listen to, listen to when I'm driving or if I'm vibing. A lot of times, it's, it, I don't go straight for hip hop unless it's like my, you know, my yeah. time hip hop. So let me ask you, like, what's your favorite spot or favorite spots in Miami? Um, for one, speak not just because it's you. Even whenever, not even when people ask me, <laughs> speak is always a bit because speak is a diverse. Like it's most diverse open mic. It's also a diverse crowd. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You know, I know when I go there, like I'm gonna get a good, like I see a good even spread of like, all right, if I can move these people, I can move these people. I have an older crowd here. I have the younger cats over here. I got like the artists over here. You know what I'm saying? So in my mind, like if I can get a huge chunk of that to really feel it, then I know it's something because it's not just one thing. There. Whereas right. a lot of shows you go to, it's just all artists. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're rapping for other rappers. Right. Straight up. And that's a cool thing. I like to see other artists like, um, put, you know, really push themselves. And that's a big thing that I've been seeing that I'm happy for in Miami. A lot of artists are really supporting other artists, which is great. But a lot of times, it's, it's discouraging for us artists who work with me. There's a crowd for just artists, you know what I'm saying? So when you go to speak, you know, it's like, there's people who come to support that and everyone see it. So I love speak. Uh, Winwood Yard, uh, Winwood Yard is a dope spot. Homer Garden, a dope one with, uh, um, you know, it's finest, those jam sessions were awesome. Shout out to them, shout out to Ariel, shout out to Cynthia. Um, shout out, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Renee's is a new spot that, like, I'm just, just What about that, 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 that organization that you've been rocking with for a while? It's Catalyst Hip Hop. Yeah. Right, and Catalyst, we're not having a lot of shows. We just had another show there for one of our, you know, our in-house MCs. He had a, um, uh, Saturday, it's called Saturday Night Live, which was had you know open with an open cipher. Open started with that, then it had uh, performances. In between the performances were um, producer battles. It's just a vibe of just pure hip hop. Cause that's what Catalyst is. Catalyst, it is still there to this day. It's open on Tuesdays now for people to come through and just uh, for the B boys as a B boy when a lot of them come through and they come and just open gyms. So you've lived in Miami for. A lot of a lot of years. Yeah, since what? Since 90s. 90s. Since 1990. Since 1990. Yeah. How has the music scene changed since you first got here to now? It's changed. In, wow, it has changed a whole lot in the sound, in the the locations of the place that used to be. Because I've been doing like when I started really getting into music, I would say like hustling out into the streets and everything promoting would be like 2000. Four, around there. I've been rhyming since probably like 97, 98, but 2004 was when I was like out for morning. And it was only the beats, you know what I'm saying? Very few spots, um, everybody was just, nobody was really helping out anybody else unless you were a part of that camp, you know what I mean? That's the biggest thing I think that's changed where like everybody's, one, it's that one hand wash the other mentality is actually really, it's out here. And there are still those little fuck ass people out here with this, but for the most part, there it's, it's a lot of support that I'm seeing. I stress that all the time, so I've been seeing that. So that's for me in the music scene is the biggest thing. Every people are like, camps are coming together and working with this camp and artists are working with this artist, and it's just a flowing thing. You know what I'm saying? There's spots like Speak. There's there are these. It's a sol it's a solid thing now. Whereas before it was kind of like oh, I don't know. It's like one or two spots maybe yeah. to go. Yeah, the Catalyst has developed. always been there, but now there's like it's it's growing. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, I would agree with that. It's growing, it's growing. I would yeah. agree with that. You know, I've, I've lived here since the '80s, so I, I kind of see the same progression. Right. And it's it's it's, it's a real thing now. Mm -hmm. It's not like a little one off here and there. Nah, it's like culture exists yeah. in Miami. Yeah. It is. And That's when you travel around. When, when we get people from out of state coming in, you from New York come down here and say, right. yo, this is what New York used to look like. Right. You know what I mean? Now it's a little bit more pretentious or whatever the case is, but we, it's like real stuff happening right now. Right. So I'm excited about living in New York now because we can make this a reality. You know, we're in a position to do things. Right. Yeah, definitely. So, talk to me about your, your current projects, what you got going on. Uh, I'm still pushing pieces as if that shit came out yesterday. It's been going strong you know, every time. But I feel like I'm in a good spot where I'm getting known more, and then, but there's still so many people that haven't heard it. So, when they do hear, they 
see me perform and then they hear the project it's brand new to them. So Pieces is like my baby, my first solo project, still pushing that. Too Easy, the project that I have with my brother, Velvet Jones, we've been, you know, I'm just starting to now um, perform in that more. It's just a whole different vibe, you know what I'm saying? Bring that, because my father and stuff is more lyrical, more like on the hardcore tip. This one is more laid back. Um, just finished a project with the group I'm a part of, what they do with my, um, my boys Orion, Thousand, and Infinite Sweet Jesus. Um, we have a project called Substance Abuse, just finished it up. Every track re represents a certain vice, which is why it's called Substance Abuse. Um, and basically it was just, it started with one track, ended up like being another one, and then it was like, yo, let's just make a track, let's just make an album. I've known all these guys, they've been in the game, they've been out here doing their work. Thousand is in the, was in the battle scene heavy. Orion's been doing his stuff with Spam All Stars, and just, he's, he's just, he's been out here really doing it for the underground hip hop scene as well as Infinite. And it just makes sense for all of us just to come together. We knew each other like personally now. It's time to do some music shit. Yeah. Um, so that's coming to be ready by the end of this year, beginning of next year. Um, working right now on my next solo project. But that, that's just you know I'm in the writing process, just getting my next you know all these beats together and everything. And then you know you can just catch me just performing. I'm out here trying to be as many places as I can, basically. You know what I'm saying? So. So where can people find your work? Oh, you can find my uh, my EP. You can find it on Spotify, iTunes, just the Spaz pieces, um, where all digital music is sold. Um, SoundCloud, I have we have that plus my uh, Too Easy, um, and then various tracks that I'm that I'm just uh, featured on my SoundCloud. There, I have you know everything, Bandcamp, all that extra stuff. Um, at Spaz305 on Instagram. That's basically where you can find all my stuff. You click that link and it sends you to everything. You know, it, it is a dope, um, Spaz 305, I mean, you rep Miami to the foot. But I'm thinking about coming up with a name for myself, like maybe like Rob 786. Because 786 never gets <laughs> They don't love, get it, man. Do it. it. Never gets Yo. Everybody's 305. Uh-huh. They'll Seven, come and not buy for 786. does not get rep. You are, <laughs> yo, that's dope. Yo, so since we out here, I mean, is it cool if you kick a few verses? Yeah, man, always. Alright, so, so we're gonna cut, get shit right with the cameras, and we're gonna come back with Spaz kicking too. Fire! Some hot fire, son!